At The Table with New Studio. Today's episode is a really um, special one. It might get a bit serious at some point or another, but it's a really, definitely a really important one to talk about. So World Mental Health Day falls today, and we thought it would be a great idea to um, bring this up in this segment and talk about it and just have an open discussion about it, right? And also, by the way, this video is sponsored by the Psychiatry Services at Ministry of Health. So thank you for endorsing us. With that said, my name is Shirley and these are our guests for today's episode. Uh, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, uh, I'm Zayana from Zaypasam. I'm a final year UBD student who occasionally sing and act. Hi, I'm Midi. I'm a Pokemon enthusiast. Yeah. <laughs> you might have seen him on like Spotify. No, Spotify. no, you've never <laughs> seen him. Two sponsor posts. <laughs> yes, so. <laughs> yeah, and you might recognize this little guy as well. This is our tiny telephone. Usually I use this to make sure that our colleagues don't like bite each other's heads off. But for this video, I'll leave it here between you guys. And at any point of the video, if you feel uncomfortable talking about something or like a question or you want to just move on to something, yeah, so feel free to like ring it. I have to be frank, when we were um, looking for people to participate in this video, it was actually really difficult to get people to agree. The issues that they have was mostly like they were afraid to come on camera and to talk about their mental health problems, whether it was because of like potential for backlash mm -hmm. or even like someone told me they were scared because they said if they were to come on camera, they might have a lower chance of like finding employment as well. Oh. Like if like employers were to find out about their mental health issues. Oh, okay. So my first question is, why do you think talking about mental health, especially in a space as open as this, is such a social stigma, especially for like Bruneians. I think it comes from the lack, general lack of understanding of what mental health is. Mm. A lot of people still think that mental health is only the two extremes. It's either you're mentally healthy or you're very mentally unhealthy. Mm. They don't realize that mental health also encapsulates um, normal everyday things like just checking in with your emotions mm. and like um, seeing how you're coping with stress yeah. and your feelings. Yeah. And I think also that people think that talking about your feelings and your emotions are still viewed as weak mm -hmm. even today. Yeah, plus like you kind of want to have be in a society where it's perfect, everything's happy yeah. and it's easier to you know, just be in that sort of image. Yeah, and also maybe even culturally people, like perhaps the older generation might not understand that um, these are things that not just plague the younger generation but even maybe people among them, yeah. their age as well. Yeah, it's true. It also leads to like my next question. Uh, I've not been diagnosed, um, so I can't say whether or not I suffer from mental illness, not, but I do get like panic attacks, mm -hmm. rarely. So I was actually, for this video, I was like researching um, a lot of things. After like just going through a few websites and looking at the symptoms, I was like, okay, so yeah, I do suffer from panic attacks. What has been your experience like with your mental health struggles? For me personally, I was diagnosed three years ago with depression and anxiety and at the time I was actually doing a degree in the UK and I was under scholarship but as a result of my diagnosis one thing led to another I actually got terminated from my scholarship so I had to come back here and redo my second year of university and then coming back I also had to deal with telling my family what happened um, why it happened and also dealing with the judgments that came with it not just from my family but also from people generally, but especially the older generation. As for myself, I, it's only been recent that I've noticed I have moments uh, in my, uh, in parts of my days. Mm. I, I, I try to keep it in check. I, I do that by you know spending time with the people I love uh, and some quality time to, my, to myself as well. But I only checked it online, right? I might have, because I didn't get myself checked in yeah. yet. I might have a, uh, some sort of long-lasting depression. Yeah, it takes it, it takes a bit from me, mm -hmm. uh, a bit of my day just to keep myself in check. Yeah. Sometimes I take uh, a good ten minute in the toilet now, just mm -hmm. to like, just yeah. to like, get myself checked out, and, and I'm fine. Mm -hmm. It it comes and goes, yeah. uh, but I think it only it really depends on where I am in the day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm with my friends, I'm alright. I'm 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 that guy. I'm your buddy. <laughs> it's only when I'm alone. Mm -hmm. When when you how I say it to my girlfriend. Uh, when I get too into my own head, mm, that's that, you know, like, yeah. You mean you are your own worst enemy? So I, like, 
Yeah, I definitely agree. And with have you me. tried arguing with yourself? You never win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even when you win, you lose. Even when you lose, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so um, going along the line of like checking like your symptoms online. So I know you shouldn't like self-diagnose. Oh. Yeah, like don't self-diagnose, guys. Like if you really need to go and like get Just yourself check. checked. But even before stepping into the doctor's office. Like how does one even begin to gauge their like mental health? How do you get started on that journey? I think like the first step is definitely like uh, you just have to have you know a bit of faith in yourself. You know, like maybe it's a good thing to probably just swallow that ego a little bit. Yeah. You might need help. Yeah. And some people like myself, I like to bottle things up, mm -hmm. and you know a bottle can only handle so much, right? So if people notice that. Uh, you know, you're, you're not yourself or whatever, they might be right. Mm. And mm. I'm not saying like you have to go straight Taros and if you think you can handle it yourself, yes, but there comes to a point where, you know, you, there's only so much that you can do. Yeah. I think when you say that um, not, feeling your, not feeling like yourself, I think this is where it's really important to really get to know yourself and get to know your habits mm -hmm. and knowing to spot certain signs. Like I know some of the symptoms of being possibly mentally unhealthy is losing interest in things you used to enjoy yeah. and um, for me personally I know things are getting bad I can tell from certain aspects of my life like for example that one losing interest if I stop singing for an extended period of time I know that something is wrong yeah. and also the state of my room mm -hmm. if it's messier than usual it usually reflects for me it reflects what's going on in my head as well wow. yeah. also if you notice you've become more irritable lately or like you said, if other people are saying yeah. that you're not yourself, it might be a good idea to take a second to check. Yeah. And if, if you are if you have been acting differently. Yeah. The part thing about being on top of your mental health is sometimes you don't realize how bad it is until it gets a bit too bad. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's not exactly my room. It's uh, my significant other. She knows how to take care of me, mm -hmm. and when when I know that she's taking extra care, it's like uh, there must be something up that I'm not noticing. Mm -hmm. She checks on that. Yeah. That's good. You yeah. gotta find someone who checks up on you. Like <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think that's also really important. Let someone check up on oh, you. Yeah. 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 Because um, going back to what you said, how you yourself is your worst enemy. In the same way that other people actually see you the way you are, and not just how you view yourself as this like downtrodden um, person who doesn't deserve like all this yeah. like help or encouragement yeah. and kindness when you actually do yeah everybody so, does yeah everybody does guys yeah. nice. <laughs> we <laughs> love you <laughs> you're yeah. great yeah i think that's also one thing that you have to keep reminding yourself like even if you don't feel like you're great like I don't, someone out there feels yeah. someone out there thinks you're good like you're a good person so like from your own experience like what are some ways to cope with this like okay so having someone there to check up on you but also for yourself like how do you get out of that mental state mm -hmm. of like everything is not right for that question uh i'd like to say that mitch album when he wrote uh, tuesdays with maury he said mm -hmm. it best well maury actually said it best mm -hmm. it, it's uh how you and how you would check your emotions would be like it's like wearing a t-shirt you know like you get very comfortable with it but a t-shirt is a t-shirt you know yeah. you wear it too long it's gonna smell yeah. it's gonna be bad it's not gonna look it's not gonna look great it's probably even gonna go out of style <laughs> so at one point or another you're gonna have to change your shirt now, no matter how comfortable it gets right but it's hard to do that because you know you, like I said you're just so comfortable the message there would be you just just uh, get comfortable with however you're feeling for a bit I mean when's the time to let it go you, sh you just shouldn't for me, once I realize that something is wrong, first thing I do is I go to someone to talk it out. Yeah. Because sometimes talking to someone helps you organize your thoughts yeah. and helps you realize things you were feeling that you didn't realize before. Mm. But see, I've been dealing with this for a long time. Maybe not as long as other people, but every time I get in that mental space, I'm still like, what do I do? Yeah. So a lot of the time, I would go online and say, what do you do? when you feel depressed because <laughs> getting help does isn't just professional help it isn't just going to a friend it can also be um well legit medical advice yeah. from the internet yeah. from like um trusted sources because they usually have steps and tools to mm -hmm. help you um get out of your head like yes this. yes yeah 
there's this book that actually helped me deal with my depression a lot. It is called Reasons to Stay Alive. Wow. wow. Yeah, it mm. actually yeah, helped pull me out of a deep hole. Mm. So yeah. I would recommend you get yeah. that. Not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> Going on that topic, I think like one of the issues with mental health that people maybe find difficult to talk about is what it can lead to. And mm. when you mention that book, reasons to stay alive, sometimes it is just that. Sometimes it is that you just need a reason to go through another day. How do you feel about people who might take this whole thing like a bit too lightly? Not even just talking about like the whichever generation, like people who think people with mental health issues use that as an excuse to get out of things. Like, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I think that, like she said earlier on, it's just a lack of information, a lack of awareness, you know, like, this stuff is, this thing is real, you know, like, and when you actually go through it you, yourself, you don't really know how, how bam, that this thing really yeah. gets, yeah. you know? So, but mostly I think it's just like people, they just don't know enough. Yeah. And it's maybe a misrepresentation on TV as well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's a big thing, I yeah. think, like, misrepresentation in the media. You know what my favorite representation, but not really, I don't know if there was intended to be a representation mm -hmm. of mental illness, but a movie that I could relate to, surprisingly, with my depression, was actually Inside Out. Oh, oh actually, my yeah. god! Because, <laughs> yeah. yeah. like, when... Um, the blue thing. When the, when her, what are those? Those islands? Oh yes! They start to shut down, oh, yeah. it felt like pieces of me shutting down while I'm going through depression and mm. like me losing touch with those parts of myself like friendship and like things I used to like mm. I thought that was a good depiction of it I don't know if it was intentional or not but I thought yeah. it was a good way of yeah. looking at things. yeah whether intentional or not I think like the message behind it is a really good one yes yeah. so yeah oh my god yeah, I mean, you mean it doesn't affect just adults it affects kids too yeah exactly yeah, yeah. So going about that, right? So how do you think we can normalize talking about mental health then? Because when we talk about physical health, it's like a normal thing. It's like, oh yeah, I'm ill. Oh yeah, I broke my arm. I need to go and get medical help. Mm -hmm. But with, with mental health, it's like something that people tend to keep to themselves or something mm -hmm. that people are not, they, they don't really want to put it out there. Like, oh, I suffer from this. And other people look at it and think, oh, that means you're different from the rest of us. I see. Yeah. How can we go about, like, what do you think we can do to normalize talking about it? I think definitely if your group of people, the people you are with, don't talk about it, I think it'd be good to start. Mm -hmm. Like, you be the one that starts it. But also, to normalize talking about anything is just to have more conversations on it. The more you do it, the more it becomes normalized into your lives. Mm -hmm. And one thing to keep in mind is when you want to normalize talking about depression is that it's a conversation. It's a two-way conversation. You normalize talking about it, but you also make sure to listen when someone is talking about their mm -hmm. struggles. That's true. Because yeah. otherwise, agree. if it's one-sided, like no one would want to come out. And, and if someone comes out with their struggle, to make sure not to dismiss it. Yeah. Or sometimes people try to give solutions when people just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's not like, I don't want a pill just to get over it. Like, there's no such thing as yeah. that. But I completely agree. It's like, you have your, uh, your set of friends or just one person that you can talk about anything. Mm -hmm. like, and then just open up walls down, I think. You know, yeah, and then hopefully, you get, like I said, have a bit of faith in yeah. your friend, right? In, your, in, your, in this person that you're opening up to. Mm -hmm. And like, they'll get the message, even if you're using in windows, even if you're using mm -hmm. like little, little hints that yeah. this is what I'm going through. Hopefully, you know, this, they, they will get it, mm -hmm. if, especially if you're really, really close. Yeah. And, and then they would know, they, they, they would love to listen to you, you know. But even if you don't have someone to talk to, I think there are points of contact you can go to. Most institutions have their own counseling services. Yeah. Because when I was um, back in uni, that's when who I first went to. That was my first point of contact. I went to the counseling service in my uni, who then referred me to doctors. I used to see a psychologist every one, once every two weeks and a psychiatrist once every two weeks. And it just helped having that period of time in your week where you can just talk about anything to someone that you can trust. Mm -hmm. I think we need to also normalize that, normalize getting help. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I was also on medication for two years on antidepressants and I think that it's not something that I'm advocating but I also don't think it should be as stigmatized as it is. I don't think 
it is as bad as people make it seem. Because it's medication. Yeah, yeah. it's the yeah. medication. Like, if you have diabetes, no one's gonna... Um, like, look down on you for, like, taking insulin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not for everyone, and you have to talk to your um, to professionals about it, of course. But it's just, for me, it was something to give me that bit of help. Yeah. Because, you know, when you're down there, what have you got to lose by yeah. trying something? Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, so we're coming to the end of the video. So, what are your final thoughts that you would like to share with like our audience? The one thing I want to say that, uh, to people who are going through whatever they're going through is that it's all right. You're okay. And if you ever need to reach out, you, you, you should reach out. Um, what helped me most was that it's Re, it's a really big step, you know. It's gonna help you way more than you think. I have my girlfriend. I reached out to her. One thing that she recently shared was like, I used to love drawing, I like anime, whatever sceneries. I, I lost touch. I, I lost interest. And she said maybe take a day. I mean, not take a day. Take an hour in it every day. You doodle something. You don't have to be great at it. You can do whatever. I mean, for me, it's doodling. For me, it's a gym. But you don't have to be like an Olympic. You know, yeah. athlete. Mm. You don't have yeah. to be Mariah Carey to sing. You don't have to be Picasso yeah. to do though. Yeah. Do whatever you want to do to make you feel better. And you know, at the end of the day, you're alright. You're okay, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, on the camera. Virtual. <laughs> when I shared my stories on my social media, a lot of people reached out to me asking about how to get help. And a lot of the times, their main concern was that they don't want to go to a professional mm. and then have a professional tell them you don't have this and they're scared that they will get laughed at mm. that is something you don't have to worry about because these are trained professionals they know not to do that and they know what to say and what to do better than probably most people mm. sure. so i think you should keep in mind that when you go to a professional a certified professional that you are in a safe space and not to worry about getting judgment. At the end of the day, to really get to know yourself and to put yourself, your mental health, as a priority. Because, like we said earlier, no one will know you better than you know yourself. And be more kind with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Treat, when you are at that place, treat yourself how you would treat a friend at that place. Yeah. So, um, just to like cap off this video, last night, my friend texted and he was like, you know, sometimes you have to remember that sometimes you can't. Like, you, you keep doing all these things and you feel, you, it, it's like, I can do this, I can keep up, I can, I can, I can. But sometimes you just cannot, mm. you know. And it's okay to feel like you cannot. I think that's one of the things that people forget, that it's okay to not be able to do what you are meant to do for the day if your mental headspace is not there. Mm. Yes, you are your own worst enemy. But you are also far kinder than you think that you are and in the way that you treat other people. Yeah, so that's it for the conversation for today. But this conversation does not have to stop here. I think it's great to just keep talking about it and keep you know, putting it out there to the point where people see mental health and they don't go, oh, that's a taboo topic. Mm -hmm. When they see it, they'll go, oh, yeah, this is another thing that we have to go through. But it's okay because other people go through this yeah. as well. It's more common than people think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think yeah. People forget that it's more common than people think because everyone has mental health, mm -hmm. and maybe not everyone goes through like the the various issues, but more people go through it than you know, than we think. Mm -hmm. And also, if you need someone to talk to, and um, for some reason like your friends aren't there or your family is not there, Talia Harapan one four five. They are medical professionals available to help you out. So that's one point of contact that you can reach out to if, again, if for some reason you can't reach out to anyone. So I know there's been like um, news about how it's been abused. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such a sad thing because this is one way to help people. And we hope that, you know, more people will be able to be more aware of this issue and use it as, as it is intended to be used. Yeah. And that's it for uh, this video. If you like this video, please do leave a like, um, subscribe to this channel. We have other great content coming out. We have several uh, videos as well up if you would like to check them out. We'll leave a link down in the description for our last video, which was on racism in Brunei. Mm. It's a really cool video, a lot of like perspectives on different cultures as well. 
And we're also really interested in talking about all these sort of human social issues. So if you do have any topics you want us to bring up and you want us to talk about it, feel free to leave your um, suggestions down in the comments below. And we would love to hear your own personal stories about your um, struggles with mental health. If you feel free to, if you feel comfortable sharing those with us as well. So thank you, Sai. Thank you, Vidi, for no being here for with us. Me. Yes, it has been a really good discussion with you guys. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. That's it. This has been At The Table with New Studio. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.